Welcome to Hello English Teacher. Today let's look at the line by line explanation of the chapter Should Wizard Hit Mommy from Class 12 English. If you are watching my video for the first time, please subscribe. You can listen to the explanations of chapters from classes 10, 11 and 12 English. And don't forget to press the bell icon so that you get notified whenever I upload a video. Let's move on to the video now. The author of this story is John Updike. John Updike is an American writer of novels, short stories and poetry known for his careful craftsmanship and realistic but subtle depiction of American Protestant small town middle class life. So here is a story about the worldwide view of a little child and the difficult moral question she raises during the story session with her father. So the story also raises another moral question if parents should be having or given the authority of their children or should they let the children do whatever they like. So this point is proved by the narrator in the story by telling a story to his child every day. So let's look at the story. In the evenings and for Saturday naps like today's, Jack told his daughter Joe a story out of his head. So what happened? The narrator is Jack. So every day he has to tell his daughter a story every evening when she is going to sleep and every for every Saturday afternoon when she has to sleep, the father that is Jack has to tell his daughter, his daughter's name is Joe, a story out of his head. That means he has to create a story and tell it to her. So this was a routine every day night and for all Saturday afternoons. And this also was a Saturday. This custom began when she was two, was itself now two years old and his head felt empty. So this custom of storytelling, this habit of storytelling started when the girl was two years old. When this, when ja Jack's daughter was two years old and now this has been continuing for two years. So that means now she is four years old and he is saying that his head felt empty. That means now there is no story in his head because he has been telling, creating stories for almost two years now and it was very difficult for him to find a new story. Each story was a slight variation of a basic tale. So every story had a same, had the same storyline but then there was only very little difference from each other. A small creature usually named Roger Fish, Roger Squirrel or Roger Chipmunk had some problem and went with it to the wise owl. So the basic theme or the basic plot line of the story was like this. So there used to be an animal called Roger and it was in each story the animal would differ. It would either be Roger fish in one story, in the next story it will be Roger squirrel and in another story it would be Roger chipmunk. So the character's name is always Roger and this Roger used to have some problem and with this problem it used to go and see the wise owl. The wise owl told him to go to the wizard and the wizard performed a magic spell that solved the problem. So what happened? In order to solve the problem, this Roger would go to see the wise owl. So the owl will tell that you have to go to the wizard and then he goes to the wizard and then the wizard will may do some magic and then ask for a payment, demanding in payment a number of pennies greater than the number that Roger creature had. But in the same breath directing the animal to a place where the extra pennies could be found. So every time the wizard would ask for some money and that much money would not be there with Roger. And at the same time the wizard will also tell Roger where to find that extra money. So this used to be the basic plot line. So only the problem would change and the animal would change. Then Roger was so happy he played many games with other creatures and went home to his mother just in time to hear the train whistle that brought his daddy from Boston. So after the problem was solved, Roger would go home and he would be happy and he would also play a lot of games with other creatures. So after playing, he would go home and he would be with his mother and then as he reaches home, he could hear the train whistle and in that train, his father would arrive from Boston. Jack described their supper and the story was over. 
so this was the story that every time jack used to tell only difference is that the jack, the roger animal would be different and the problem would be different so this used to be the story all the time working his way through this scheme was especially fatiguing on saturday because joe never fell asleep in naps anymore so for him this planning the scheme and making the story was especially fatiguing means was he was getting very tired of this procedure because especially on saturdays because joe used to never fall asleep and knowing this made the ride seem futile and so he always knew that on saturdays it was very difficult to make her sleep and this right right means this uh, ritual of telling the story he knew though it was very futile means useless so there was no use of telling such a story on saturday because it did not make her sleep at all the little girl not so little anymore the bumps her feet made under the covers were half way down the bed their big double bed that they let her be in for naps and when she was sick had at last arranged herself so what happened the girl used to lie down on the big bed where they used to sleep so they used to allow her to sleep on the saturdays and she used to cover herself and she used to keep on wiggling her feet and she, that means she was not at all satisfied with the story maybe she was not satisfied or she was not able to sleep so she used to keep on moving under the bed sheet and from the way her fat face deep in the pillow shone in the sunlight sifting through the drawn shades it did not seem fantastic that some magic would occur and she would take her nap like an infant of two so he could see her shining face through the sunlight that shone in through the shades of their window but then he was thinking that there would be some magic that could make her sleep but that was not possible now as she was growing up it was very difficult for him to get her to sleep and like a small baby she would not go to sleep immediately her brother bobby was too and already asleep with his bottle jack asked who shall the story be about today so beside her she had her brother also sleeping he was a baby of two he was just two years old and he was already asleep so jack wanted to start his story telling ritual on this saturday so he asked her who shall the story be about today so which animal do we need to tell story about today he asked his daughter roger jo squeezed her eyes shut and smiled be thinking smiled to be thinking she was thinking so jo was just thinking what animal should she tell today her eyes opened her mother's blue so her eyes opened and she had her mother's blue eyes skunk she said firmly so she said that today the story must be about a skunk what's a skunk it's an american mammal uh, it's a cat sized mammal which has black and white fur on its body okay so a new animal they must talk about skunks at nursery school so she wanted to she wanted her father to tell the story about skunk because she must talk about it in the school so she wanted to hear a story about skunks having a fresh hero momentarily stir jack to creative enthusiasm all right he said so because today he got a new animal because skunk was not common they used to talk about all other animals so that made him a little bit enthusiastic and he started getting ready to tell his story once upon a time in the deep dark woods there was a tiny little creature by the name of roger skunk and he smelt very bad so jack started telling the story and he said that once there was a tiny creature that lived in the deep dark woods and his name was roger skunk and the problem he had was he was smelling very bad yes joe said he smelled so bad that none of the other little woodland creatures would play with him so what was his problem this roger skunk had a very bad smell and so that nobody used to come near him or play with him all the other creatures would never be with him jo looked at him solemnly she hadn't foreseen this so she looked at him solemnly means very seriously she looked at jack uh, she didn't not expect such a kind of a problem so she just looked at her father whenever he would go out to play jack continued with zest remembering certain humiliations of his own childhood 
so what is the meaning of this so whenever he go, would go out to play so when he said that jack thought of his own childhood where he also faced the same situation he was a lonely child and he did not have many friends to play with so with zest means with lot of enthusiasm he was about to tell the story and at the same time he thought of the humiliations that he faced as a child all of the other tiny animals would cry oh oh here comes Ro roger stinky skunk so he continued his story telling that whenever the animal used to come out to play all the animals used to make fun of him by telling them look here comes stinky skunk stinky means that has a bad smell and they would run away and roger skunk would stand there all alone and two little round tears would fall from his eyes so when all the creatures would make fun of roger what would happen they would all run away and the skunk would be there standing alone because nobody would play with him and then tears would start falling from his eyes and roger skunk uh, this jack is telling the story because he also faced similar situations as a child he had faced a lot of humiliation so from that memory he is trying to tell the story of roger skunk the corners of joe's mouth drooped down and her lower lip bent forward as he traced with a four finger along the side of her nose the course of one of roger one of roger skunk's tears so she tried to be very sad she was feeling very sad when she heard that roger skunk did not have any friends to play with so she kept her mouth she kept her face in such a manner and then tears started rolling down from her eyes won't he see the owl so she asked her father one question so is he not going to see the owl because in all his story so we know that there is a same plot in which the pro animal with the problem goes to see the owl so he is she is asking her father won't he go and see the owl she asked in a high and faintly roughened voice sitting on the bed beside her jack felt the cover stuck as her legs switch tensely so she was feeling a bit tense because she wanted to know how roger is going to react and so she was not sitting properly she was going on moving her legs and so she asked her father is not roger going to go and meet the owl he was pleased with this moment he was telling her something true something she must know and had no wish to hurry on so he was feeling happy that he was going to continue the story and she he also wished that she must know the truth but downstairs a chair scraped and he realized that he must get down to help clear paint the living room woodwork so when he was telling the story he heard some noise downstairs so it was actually his wife clear who was painting the woodwork in the living room and he wanted to go and help her well he walked along very sadly and came to a very big tree and in the tip top of the tree was an enormous wise old owl and then he continued his story and he said that roger skunk walked very sadly and he came to a very big tree and in the tip top of the tree he saw a very huge owl sitting so what is the meaning of tip top means right on the top good mr owl roger skunk said all the other little animals run away from me because i smell so bad so do you the owl said so what did the skunk do it saw the owl and then it told its problem so what was the problem it said that all the other animals ran away from it because it was smelling very bad and so the owl asked so do you smell so bad what can i do roger skunk said and he cried very hard so the animal started crying because he was not having any friends to play the wizard the wizard jo shouted and sat up right and a little golden book spilled from her bed so immediately jo was very carefully listening to the story and she wanted the wizard to react and solve his problem so she became excited and she sat up so when she sat up what happened the book that was there in her lap the book was called the little golden book it fell down from her lap now jo dad is telling the story do you want to tell daddy the story no you me so because she was interrupting jack was annoyed and he asked her if she wanted to tell him the story but then she replied no you have to tell me then lie down and be sleepy
so he told her to lie down and listen to the story and go to sleep her head relapsed onto the pillow and said out of your head well then she said okay come on continue the story the owl thought and thought at last he said why don't you go see the wizard so the owl told the roger skunk to go and meet the wizard because the wizard would have a solution daddy what are magic spells are magic spells real so in between she called her daddy and she wanted to ask a question so she asked are magic spells real because the wizard is supposed to use a magic spell and solve his problem so immediately she asked her father are magic spells real this was a new phase just this last month a reality phase so what is the new phase this girl asking a lot of questions so until now the girl was quiet that is jo was quiet and she used to only listen to the story but from last uh, one month onwards she had started asking him questions that is interfering and asking questions so he is calling it a reality phase because she is trying to understand things and asking a lot of questions when he told her spiders eat bugs she turned to her mother and asked do they really and once what happened when he was telling a story he told that spiders eat bugs and so she was not convinced and so she asked her mother if that was real and when claire told her that god was in the sky and all around them she turned to her father and insisted with a sly yet eager smile is he really so once even the mother told her about god being all over and around them and all and she with a sly smile that is she didn't want to believe it so she immediately asked her father is mother telling the truth or is god real and is god really all around them they are real in stories jack answered curtly so very cleverly jack answered saying that these things are real in stories she had made him miss a beat in the narrative so he was feeling quite a bit frightened because she was asking a lot of questions in between so i hope you like today's video let's look at the next part of this lesson in my next video for more interesting videos do subscribe to hello english teacher like share give your valuable comments below thank you for watching